Lord, I place into your hands the things that I can't do. Lord, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Lord, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Lord, I place into your hands my friends and family. Lord, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Lord, I place into your hands the person I would be, for I know I always can trust you. Lord, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Lord, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Lord, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for we know we always can trust you. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Today is a special day in the Mills household. It is our 33rd wedding anniversary. If you'd have asked me 33 years ago, I, I think I would have been impressed if I could have got here. Today's been a, a day of blessing and um, a day of celebrating endurance and patience and fortitude and love. Uh, I found joy in the sunrise in the sunshine, in the growing plants, uh, being outside and the wind and the clothes drying on the washing line and the, the, the leaves all bursting out uh, just gave me great joy. Uh, and I found it a day of oasis, of an oasis of calm and joy in a world that is a struggling, in a world of pain, in a world where the brokenness is so evident all the time and where there is so much struggle and suffering and sadness. So I give thanks today for a day of oasis. Our evening psalm this evening is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Our Old Testament reading this evening is from Genesis 43, verses 1 to 15. Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten up the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little more food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? 
What we told him was in answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, bring your brother down? Then Judah said to his father Israel, send the boy with me and let us be on our way so that we may live and not die, you and we and all our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. You can hold me accountable for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would have now returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry them down as a present to the man. A little balm and a little honey, gum, resin, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the top of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and be on your way again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, so that he may send you back your other brother and Benjamin. As for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took the present and they took double the money with them as well as Benjamin. Then they went on their way down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament song is a song of humility from Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Let us humble ourselves. Let us strive to know our God, whose justice dawns like the morning star. Its dawning is as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O oh, Jacob? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reading from um, the Gospel according to Mark is from chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. A well-known and well-heard uh, reading. This is where we encounter Jesus and the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. On that day when the evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them on in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why were you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's reflection comes from um, the St. Paul's, uh, Paul's Cathedral. Uh, every week they send out an email. It's um, learning at uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, today the, reflections, um, the reflection is uh, by Susanna Snyder. The Reverend Dr. Susanna Snyder is lecturer in ethics and theology and an academic dean at Ripon College, Cudston. The reflection is entitled Stepping Back. 
Lent has primarily become associated with individual practices. I choose personally what it is that I'm going to give up. But what if we were to think together about what we collectively should let go of? Letting go at the individual level is important, but it's not enough. Christian faith is not primarily about a set of private, about a private set of beliefs or practices. It is rather about a way of being together that works towards the good of all. Dorothy Sowell, Dorothea Sowell, a 20th century German theologian, suggested that there are three things people living in affluent Western society need to let go of. Three sins that we are all caught up in. They relate to ego, possessions and violence. Our society is individualistic. It's all about me making my way in the world, working towards my career and building up my resources, about securing my or perhaps my close family's happiness and place in the world. Our neoliberal capitalist economy depends on nourishing a desire for possessions, which in turn feeds our individualism. In order to shore up our ego and hold on to our possessions, we find ourselves directly or indirectly practising violence. We fight wars for oil supplies, for land or power, or we do verbal violence to others, stereotyping those whom we are afraid of to justify their exclusion from accessing the goods that we enjoy. And we are plundering our fragile, beautiful, resilient planet in our insatiable, insatiable desire for more things. The war in Ukraine is only the most recent example of the deathliness of which we humans are capable. In refusing to turn stones into bread and refusing all the kingdoms of the world laid before him during his temptations, Jesus himself was showing us how to let go of ego, possessions and the power that leads to violence. As we consider what it might mean to let go this Lent, perhaps we should be asking ourselves, what might consuming less, possessing less look like? Are there ways in which I can reduce my, my participation in the violence that I am, often in spite of myself, caught up in doing to others and to our planet? and even to myself. And on the theme of that reflection, I want to share from a book entitled Eggs and Ashes, a reflection by John Polhill entitled The Rich Young Ruler. This is another take on a well-known story. A rich man asks Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to save the world? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. No one is good except God alone. You know what the sustainability manual says? Do not waste water or energy. Shop thoughtfully and use the recycling facilities. The man replied, ever since I was young, I have lived in this way. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one more thing you must do. Live so that nothing you do depletes the earth's resources or does permanent damage to its habitat. But when the man heard this, he was sad because he had a comfortable life. Jesus saw that he was sad and said, It is easier for a waste collection vehicle to enter the drive of a small council house than for a rich man to live sustainably. And also by Job, John Polhill, a prayer of Franciscan conservation. Living God, where there is waste, let us bring recycling. Where there is recycling, let us bring reuse. Where there is reuse, let us bring sustainability. Where there is sustainability, let us bring justice. Where there is justice, 
let us bring love. And by Chris Polhill, let us pray. Jesus, our Saviour, take our rubbish. The greed indulged, the broken promises, take our anger and resentments. Take the long list of sin that warps our being and weave your forgiving love that makes of waste a growing place. Amen. Gracious God and Father, come and dispel the darkness from our hearts that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you, the one and fading light glorious in all eternity. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for today, for the sun that has warmed our hearts and our faces, for the wind that has dried our washing and encouraged the leaves to move, for friendship, for food and drink, for shelter and safety, for freedom. We give you thanks. We give you thanks that we can see all that is going on in your world so that we may hold before you those for whom we now pray. There is so much in our world and so many prayers that are needed. There is the conflict in Ukraine and the forgotten conflicts in Syria and Afghanistan. There are conflicts that have been going on so long that we have become used to them. We think particularly of the apartheid situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Gracious Father, we pray for peace in our world, for all national leaders that they, have, that they may have wisdom to know and courage to do what is right, for all men and women that their hearts may be turned to you in the search for righteousness and truth, and living well together. For those who are working to improve international relationships, may they find the true way of reconciliation. May conversation and dialogue take the place of conflict. For those who suffer as a result of war, we hold before you now the injured and disabled, the troubled and distressed, the displaced, the homeless, the hungry, those who mourn for their dead, and especially those who are without hope or friend to sustain them in their grief. In the love of God, let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. For the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority, we pray to the Lord. For our own country and its national life and for all who live among us, we pray to the Lord. We give thanks for the release of the two prisoners in Iran. We lament that it took so long. We pray for all those who are fearful tonight. those who are living with uncertainty, those who are unsure about where family members are.
for a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and for all whom we love. We pray to the Lord. This Friday evening, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Nottinghamshire. Tonight, we think of all of those preparing for our Synod meeting tomorrow, for our moderator, Geoffrey, our deputy moderator, Jane, for our Synod clerk, Camilla, for all who work and serve and volunteer for the Synod and for all those who will be attending the meeting. May your presence be felt and known, your spirit move in that space and may people walk well together in their journey as a wider synod. We pray now for all those facing the challenge of COVID-19 and the growing numbers of people who have COVID-19. We pray for those who have suffered physically and all of and all those who have mental health issues caused by the changes and the situations they have faced in the last two years. We pray for those who have heavy burdens to carry on their own, for complex family situations that there may be dialogue and understanding, for those currently facing rising costs in food, housing, heat and other essentials, for those caught up in conflict, particularly tonight for those afflicted by the conflict in the Ukraine, we also think of all of those who are, who have worked for P&O and for the way in which they have been told they've lost their jobs. We lament the fact that legislation is not in place to prevent such things. We lament the connections of oil and money and power that have brought us to these places. We lament the way that we have isolated ourselves as a country. And now, closer to home, Lord, we pray for those we know and love and those who are part of this worshipping community. We pray with Liz for Ryan and Emma and Leon, with Prince for Cheryl, with Andy for Mike and for Liz and Ruth as they care for him, with Judith for Catherine, for the Reverend Ruth Dillon, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, and for all who grieve the passing of Joan Allen and the Reverend Michael Bond. And in a moment of quiet, we hold before you, loving God, those known to us, the burdens we carry, the worries, fears and anxieties that we have. We ask for your peace in our hearts. We think of all of those that we will encounter in this coming weekend for all the places of worship in this synod that will be sharing the gospel message of love and hope and peace and joy on Sunday. We give thanks for those whose lives have blessed ours and we think of all who grieve, may they know your peace. And all these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, we wrap up in the words that Jesus gave us, as we say, in the format that best works for each one of us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Coromila is a community of peace and reconciliation in Ireland. I spent some time there on my sabbatical in 2019 and I want to end with the words entitled A Liturgy of the Night. This is from the book of Daily Prayer from the Coromila community um, put together by Podrick Ochuma, written by Podrick Ochuma. On the first night God said let there be darkness and God separated light from dark. And in the dark, the land rested, the people slept, and the plants breathed, the world retreated the first night, and God said that it was good. On the second night, God said, there will be conversations that happen in the dark that can't happen in the day. The second night, and God said that it was good. And on the third night, God said, let there be things that can only be seen by night. And God created stars and insects and luminescence. The third night, and God said that it was good. And on the fourth night, God said, some things that happen in the harsh light of day will be troubled. Let there be a time of rest to escape the raw light. The fourth night. And God said that it was good. And on the fifth night, God said, there will be people who will work by night, whose light will be silver, whose sleep will be by day and whose labour will be late. And God put a softness at the heart of the darkness. The fifth night, and God saw that it was good. And on the sixth night, God listened. And there were people working and people crying and people seeking shadow and people telling secrets and people aching for company. There were people aching for space and people aching for solace and God hoped that they'd survive. And God made twilight and shafts of green to hang from the dark skies, small comforts to accompany the lonely, the joyous, the needy and the needed the sixth night, and God said that it was good. And on the last night, God rested. And the rest was good. The rest was very good. And God said that it was very good. May you find rest and peace this night as you go on into the weekend. And may the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace tonight and every night. Amen.